In this video, we're going to show you how to transistorize this Heath Kit VF1 VFO. That's it right there. Now I have it side by side with a tube model. This is an original tube model, unmodified. And this is my setup. I have the DX60 sitting on the side because I, I lack room here, so <laughs> pardon my cramped spaces. Okay. <clears throat> Why do we want to transistorize this thing? Well, I'm going to show you. The tube model has hum, it has drift, it has frequency jerks, it has key clicks, it has chirps. The green indicator that gives you your indication line warps horribly. And it's not even standalone to add insult to injury. You have to have a DX60 or DX40 to power it. This is the transistor model. It has no high voltage, nothing's going to kill you inside. It has a 20 volt power supply which is very stable. It has no tubes, uh, therefore it doesn't generate any heat. That, and, and we have eliminated the 6 volt filament, therefore we've eliminated the 60 cycle hum. Since there's no heat, there's very low drift, it is standalone, and it has a very pure tone unlike the uh, tube model. I'm going to show you the tone of this tube model here. So let's see, let's turn on the... Okay, we're in tune position. We'll tune it in. And we'll key it. That's this one. You hear the chirps and the clicks? Also notice the hum. That low growl. I'm turning the uh, turning the receiver back and forth so you can uh, hear it better. Okay, um, this is the frequency output of the uh, transistor model. It's very stable. It only wobble, wobbles around just a few cycles, as you see. Extremely now, if you bump it, it's going to take some frequency jerks. These things are not mechanically stable. But well, this one's sitting un, uh, unbothered on the bench. Now when you first turn it on on a cold day, it may have some downward drift. Um, the tube model is going to have a lot more drift than the transistor model. So you, you can see the stability of the thing right there. Okay, I'm going to set up and uh, key the thing so you can hear the pure tone. All right, here's the tone of the transistorized model. Adjusted the receiver up a little. Very nice tone. Very nice tone. Okay, so a lot of advantages to the transistor model. You'll notice this one is different. I have a video showing how you can uh, direct connect the uh, the knob, and uh, you notice on this one it has the four to one drive still installed. Okay, watch my video on that. It's already posted. Uh, two toggle switches on the front that replace the wafer switches. Uh, you can do that quite easily. You don't need the 11 meter band because uh, that's kaput. Hams don't use it anymore. The off position is eliminated because the on off switch is now in the rear, right here. 
Okay, I'm going to clean the bench up a little bit and get ready to take this thing apart and we'll show you the diagram and everything. Well, before I take it apart, I want to show you the back side of it. This is where the power transformer is mounted. You have the on-off switch for the AC, 24 volt AC power transformer, which is connected to this uh, connector right here. That's an old speaker type connector, which I've uh, reused. And your 24 volts comes out, it goes into the VFO right here. There's a small power supply inside the, to supply the DC. Uh, here's your, uh, your uh, for your uh, telegraph key, and this is a BNC connector for your output. Okay, okay, that's out of the way. Let's take it apart and show you the guts. Okay, we're out of the case. Um, in order to reconnect while it's separated like this, uh, I simply put some zip cord here at the uh, 24 volt terminals and I use some wire ties to tie it back to the red wires and that's it. We flip it on. This is the AC on off switch and it's ready to go. Now you notice the LED here. It's not an incandescent bulb. It is an LED. And uh, this is the kind of LED you can order off of uh, eBay and some uh, Newark probably has them, some other companies. There it should be ACDC, I believe. Um, different brightnesses to them. This just happened to be the ones that I already had. And uh, it will uh, fit directly into the uh, socket that uh, was used in the original VFO with a resistor to ground in order to give it the right voltage. Okay. All right. You notice in this uh, in this solid state model, there's uh, there are no tubes. Okay, they've been pulled out. Okay, we're going to flip it over and show you the underside. And by the way, these long screws are there to protect the unit when I turn it over on its back. I'll show you why. It's on its back. It has some protection, therefore. This uh, transformer uh, is not the coil. I, I should say, is not hitting the uh, hitting the bench, and everything is uh, up off the bench, and it's resting on the screws on the back. Otherwise, you stand a chance of damaging that uh, uh, that coil right there, the tuning adjustment for it. Okay, with it on the back, you'll notice that we have a. Uh, a green LED there on the power supply which indicates that it's on. Um, we've changed the wafer switches out to toggle switches. You'll see that's a very simple circuit right there. You see how the power supply is mounted. It's mounted on a piece of um, one inch uh, track cover. The kind that Panduit used to use, I think they still do, and the pass transistor is uh, mounted to the chassis. These little uh, power supply boards uh, are from VA kits. Uh, I'll show it to you in the paperwork. You can buy them off of eBay. It comes, you can buy them assembled or disassembled. It costs a little more to get them assembled. Okay, so you see how I've mounted the, uh, the track right there. It uh, has a little standoff insulator. It's mounted flat to the chassis. Okay. Turn a little more. These are the guts of the VFO. This is the key circuit right here. It uses two transistors. Everything is tied directly to the socket. Everything is a little sloppy on the soldering because I've soldered about 5,000 times while I was experimenting with this, so it is, don't worry about the sloppiness of the solder. Yours, yours will look a little neater. Okay, we do reuse some parts. This is uh, original. And uh, this is a MPF-102. This is the oscillator. It has a amplifier buffer right here. And then a final amplifier buffer mounted up here. We ran out of terminals, so this is air mounted. It's very stable short leads 
okay and there you have it this is the little tank circuit right here those two capacitors and the tank circuit rides up to the switch and eventually goes up into the coils now this one I have taken uh, I've taken this trimmer off these trimmers are very problematic if you blow on them the frequency goes crazy so they're very sensitive to temperature and it's the last remaining thing in this VFO that is temperature sensitive is this capacitor right here they are pure crap they also have silver oxide forming in them which causes frequency jerks so if you don't want those you have to get rid of them now as an experiment I took this one off I mounted an air variable underneath here if I blow on it the frequency still changes that did not solve the problem there but it doesn't change as much and you don't get the frequency jerks so I would suggest that you get rid of these things some of them probably more problematic than others um, just get rid of them and put air variables uh, so that you have a nice working VFO if you choose to leave them in there just be aware that the uh, they're very sensitive to temperature and they will give you those frequency jerks all right I'm going to show you the diagrams so that you understand uh, how this thing works not not very difficult here we go all right this is the whole diagram and uh, I'm going to show you the parts of it just uh, piece by piece so while you're looking at that hopefully uh, you can see it well enough to maybe sketch it out. We'll show you the different parts anyway. Okay, first of all, this is the oscillator. Back out a little bit. That's the MPF-102 oscillator. It still has its um, original coil right here. Original capacitors. I've got a 100K uh, resistor right there to ground. Your tank circuit didn't change much. Um, we did eliminate the um, 11 meter capacitor over here. We don't need that anymore because uh, hams don't use 11 meters. In recalibrating this thing for the transistors, which you will have to do, uh, I found that I needed more coil, didn't have enough, so I added a 12 picofarad capacitor across the coil and uh, that allowed me to uh, balance out the calibration. Now you may not have to do that on yours, but uh, just, just note if you're at the end of uh, something and you need more, just uh, use your electronic uh, prowess to figure out what to do. In this case, I added that 12 picofarad. Alright. Coming off of the uh, oscillator transistor, we go into a buffer and you notice so uh, we've taken the coil which over here we've taken it off of this circuit and moved it over to this one okay so this is an MPF 102 uh, JFET transistor also and uh, from the output of it we go over into a final buffer amplifier now I'm showing you this because we didn't have enough terminals. This is mounted air, uh, what I call uh, uh, air tie, not on a terminal, but you just solder them together in the air. Uh, uses a uh, two and a half millimeter choke with a one K in series with it. Okay, and uh, then we go to the output through a point oh one you have enough drive coming out of this to drive a DX60 uh, quite well even on uh, 11 meters I'm sorry <laughs> even on 10 meters I should say good gracious if you don't have enough drive on 10 meters there's uh, one resistor you can bridge in the DX60 to give you a lot more drive um, it's geared up for the tube model as it is okay how do we key it? Well, here's the key circuit. You remember all those chirps and clicks we had in the uh, two model? You were keying it directly to the ground. 
and you were getting some resistance across the contacts in the telegraph key that added a lot of chirp and a lot of uh, uh, scrunchy sound to the signal and this one when we when we key it right here we're uh, we're keying this transistor this is a 2N3904 very cheap transistor we key this transistor and this one instantly pulls this one to ground so you don't have that resistance those chirps and wobbles that you normally would have if you if you keyed this VFO directly to ground if you tried that you're going to wind up with a disaster so you absolutely have to have these two transistors in the key circuit the power supply uh, back off a little bit okay in the power supply these parts are mounted on the back of the cabinet that's your on off switch let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit that's your on off switch your three prong plug your 24 volt transformer these are your terminals that are mounted on the back of the cabinet these wires from inside connect right to the terminals this is a VA kits 1725 you can order them online I think they're about seven or eight dollars you can actually get them uh, um, built it comes as a kit but you can get them built I think for about 12 bucks or so so you don't have to fool with assembling them now, the assembly is very simple there are only a few parts the only problem I ever had with them is with the LED here they used to give you like a 470 ohm resistor and that would give you like I, I don't know 50 milliamps on that uh, LED which is way too much so I I put this note in here that uh, you may have to change that R3 it says is the power source for LED do not use the 470 ohm resistor now I think they're supplying like a uh, uh, 2200 ohm resistor or something like that which is um, a whole lot more in line with what it should be also I think they changed the LED so the kit you order now probably won't have that problem the VR1 uh, is fully adjustable we're going to adjust it for 20 volts DC out right on the nose don't go higher or lower if you go lower you'll lag signal if you go higher you're uh, over the capabilities of the transistors if uh, in some cases I've taken the VR1 out and put a resistor in there just by experimentation uh, changing the values to see if I could get a, an exact 20 volts and uh, then that way you can make it permanent if you want to do that but I think these uh, I think these variable resistors will probably hold it okay back off a little bit okay there's your there's your LED circuit for the uh, for the display. I got a thousand ohm resistor in series with an LED, and that's that bayonet mount LED that I showed you. Okay, you may have some questions about this. I'm not sure um, if you attempt this, whatever problems you run into. Uh, you can get in touch with me. I'll give you my email address. I'm also Kilo Victor 4 Juliet Tango. You can look me up on QRZ and uh, find me that way. So I'm not going to hide from you. Uh, if you have questions or have problems, you're free to uh, contact me. I'm pretty good at troubleshooting stuff, so I should be able to help you. All right, what else can I add to this? Uh, let me think. Uh, let's flip the page here. See what else we have. Okay. I'm going to have to flip that around. I have a diagram here of how everything actually wires. if I can get this page to stay open here and uh, make everything cooperate okay that's how that's how this tube socket wires that was originally the OA2 socket 
and those are your two and thirty nine oh four transistors that do the keying. They solder directly to the pins. This is your oscillator socket. Uh, everything solders directly to the pins. You see you have your uh, first this is your oscillator, your uh, amplifier buffer, and this is your output amplifier buffer transistor MPF 102. And you see how we just mounted these in the air? You got a ground that you can uh, connect to right there and make everything stiff. Okay. Let's see. There's your power supply. That's how those switches are wired. Not complicated at all. There's nothing at all complicated in here. I did have to put those uh, 0.01 capacitors across the AC line, that 24 volt AC line. To, otherwise, uh, you wind up with some RF problems there that you don't want. And what else? Let's see what other pages we have here in the book. Uh, let's see. When you start out, this is how you would clean up the VFO. You would uh, take everything out except um, you can leave this switch in if you want to. I changed it out to toggle switches, which work just fine. You can't use just any toggle, but these new plastic toggle switches they have now um, are immune to RF. The plastic is uh, very good on them. Not like the old uh, wafer type switches we used to get. And here's a page that shows you how to mount the power supply and so forth. This one shows you the uh, toggle switches. This one shows you how to mount the power supply. This is a piece of uh, one inch Panduit track cover and that's your transistor that's folded down to the heat sink. It has some standoffs right here. This is mounted flat to the chassis. These standoffs are to keep from shorting out anything. Let's see what else I have here. That's about it. This is the original diagram. That's the original tube circuitry. You should already have that in your manual. Okay, any questions? Whatever. Um, enjoy the video and uh, play it over and over if you like. I'm Kilo Victor for Juliet Tango. And unless I have some other comments to add, I'm out of here. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, there's one important thing I almost forgot. I told you that if you needed more grid drive on your DX60, you're going to have to bridge this resistor right here. This is a DX60B. This is the diagram for the DX60B. That's R10. Bridge that 4700 ohm resistor right there with a 2200 ohm resistor. Just bridge right directly across, across it. Um, have fun locating that. It's a little bit hidden. This is the DX60, not the B. And of course, my diagram that resi that resisted right on the crease of the paper. It's called R9 in the DX60. It's still 4,700 ohms. Bridge it with a 2,200 ohm resistor. You'll get a lot more grid drive out of the DX60 to use with this. Uh, this uh, transistorized VFO. Also, uh, if you don't have a changeover relay, uh, you're going to have to have one. You're supposed to use one with this DX60 and DX40 anyway, and it has a socket on the back for doing that. So you need to build yourself a relay box so that you can uh, 
Do your antenna change over and automatically key the VFO at the same time? There are some diagrams on uh, the internet posted for you. I think you can even buy them off of eBay, uh, change over relay boxes, or build one. Not that difficult to build, but you're going to need one or, or else it'll drive you crazy uh, flipping switches uh, while you're trying to uh, go back and forth on CW. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks.